everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can resin 3D print a QR code. That's right, I said a resin 3D printed QR code and more than likely you'll be able to print it faster than you can finish watching this video. So the reason why I wanna do this is twofold. One, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do a resin 3D printed QR code. There's plenty of tutorials on FDM 3D printed QR codes. Uh, I haven't seen one with resin. And the other is I'm looking for a way to make it easier on myself to show off my social media information when people ask about it when I'm at conventions. I'm heading to the East Coast Rep Rap Fest this weekend, so I wanna make sure I have some easy way if someone asks, hey, what's your YouTube channel? I don't have to spell it out to them. It's, oh, it's Uncle Jesse with a Y, not an E on the end. They just have something that they can scan and directly go to my social media accounts. Now, to make it easier for people to find your social media accounts, I like to use a service called Linktree. It's completely free, and you can load it up with just a variety of different links. It doesn't have to be social media links. It could be Etsy shop links. It could be just anything that you want it to link to, it'll group those together for you and allow it to really easily be accessible. So I'm setting one up for myself here, including my YouTube, uh, Etsy shop, and other social media accounts. And in the end, it's gonna give us a URL that we can use for our QR code so that when people scan it, it'll pull up this page. So when it comes to actually creating the QR code, there's probably a thousand different ways to go about this. Make sure you're doing one that's free. I know that Chuck Hellebeck over at Chep's uh, YouTube channel there made a similar video to this here a few months ago showing off how he actually used a service built directly into Tinkercad, which we're gonna be using on a little bit later on to modify our QR code that we generate here. But for mine, I'm gonna be using Canva, which is a completely free website. And I'm gonna come on here and I'm gonna say, uh, under the search, I'm gonna search for QR. Uh, and there should be a QR business code here. Uh, I'm gonna pick any, you know, any one of these will do here. I'll pick one of these top ones here. And over in the menu system here, on the left-hand side, that's what I was looking for. On the left-hand side of the page is the QR code. So I can actually enter in the URL that we got from Linktree directly into this and it's gonna generate a QR code for me. So here I'm just gonna delete anything else that's on the page and then I can take a screenshot of this newly generated QR code for us. Now, once you have your image saved to your computer, what you're gonna end up doing is going to a website called image to stl.com. I've used this a number of times in the past for different projects. This works really great if you hand draw something and want to be able to actually 3D print that. So here, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna upload my file. So here, and then I know that, give or take, I really want this to be about uh, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters and 10 millimeters high is way too thick. I'm gonna say uh, two millimeters high should be more than fine enough. And then uh, down below, I don't need a base. By the way, if you wanted this to generate sort of like a flat surface, uh, fully enclosed, you can do that as well. I'm gonna exclude that because we're gonna be doing some other work in Tinkercad in a minute. I'm gonna say convert to STL and then it will allow you to download that. Then what you're gonna do is head on over to tinkercad.com, which is a completely free design website. You're gonna sign up if you don't already have an account. You're gonna start a new project and we're gonna import in the STL that was generated from the STL from image website. Once that's imported, all we're gonna do is come in and we're gonna add a simple box to this. And what I'm gonna do is just drag this out to be, we should know this is like a 50 by 50. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save my box. Uh, this should be, I think 52, and this side should be 52 as well. And then what you can come in here and do is center these. So we're gonna center and center in the middle. And then this is way too tall, so we can drag this down. I probably want this to be like, I'm gonna say 1.25, uh, because I want it to be slightly uh, longer on the bottom here. So what I mean by that is I can drag this down just a hair, and it'll still be in between the uh, the print itself and this object here. So they're still intersected together. And if we really wanted to, we could even make this uh, slightly larger. I actually might make this like 54. Yeah, that looks a little better. 54 and we'll do uh, here, I'll come in here and say 54 as well. And then we'll center this again. 
There we go. So it has a little bit more of an edge to it. And what we're gonna end up doing next is I'm gonna come in here and grab this ring because I wanna make this a keychain and we're gonna drag it in here to the corner and this looks obviously just, it looks fine as it is. So I'm gonna say 1.25 as the height and it's still sticking up a little bit. So what we can do is again, I can grab these two objects, the very base object and the ring and we can align them to the bottom and they should be now nicely together. And then what we can do is basically just combine all of the objects together by uh, selecting all of them. You can either do control A, command A if you're on Mac. And then here at the very top is the group objects and it'll combine all of the objects into one solid piece that we can then export and then get ready for 3D printing. And in our slicer, I've brought in the file and I've got my settings dialed in uh, relatively as well as I can because we're gonna be using a white resin for the bottom first few layers and then we're gonna be switching it over to a black resin and fingers crossed, this actually works properly. Now when we come in and slice this, what I wanna do is actually pay attention. This should be a really quick print uh, but here I can see when I get down to about the 26th layer. So on the 26th layer, we're going to look at pausing the printer because that's where the transition to the black resin needs to occur. Now, as far as I'm aware, there's no pause command that we can plug in like you can do with an FDM3 printer. So we're just going to have to closely monitor this and manually pause it while it's mid printing. And I also wanted to mention a big thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Elegoo Mars 3 that I'm using in today's video. It's one of my favorites, if not the favorite resin 3 printer that I have on hand that I'm continuously printing with on a weekly basis. This thing just prints incredibly fast. It's very affordable and the print quality is absolutely amazing. Next week, I'm also gonna be taking a look at Elegoo's latest Saturn, the Saturn 8K. That's right, it's not the Saturn Saturn 2 with an 8K screen, it is actually a brand new Elegoo Saturn that has an 8K screen baked into it. If you're interested in more information about any of Elegoo's products that I've shown off in today's video, you'll be able to find links to those down below. All right, so the trick here is we're gonna now, after we've paused the print, and I was a little late on pausing it, which should still be okay, uh, I'm trying to clean this off the top, the resin off the top as best I can. Just don't want any resin dripping out while we're doing any of this. We're gonna take this out and before any resin can drip, oh no, some dripped. Putting paper towel down to help protect that and what we're gonna do is pour this back in. Is this completely uh, overcomplicating things? Yeah, probably. All right, I got it. I do have a screen protector on there. I would probably not recommend this. The FDM route is probably the best way to do this, but uh, someone's got to try this. Someone's got to try it and someone's got to show you potentially what not to do. Uh, so here I'm pouring some of this black Elegoo resin back into the printer. And again, I don't need a ton of it. So I'm just pouring a little bit in there and we're going to resume. All right, about four minutes later, this was, a, uh, I think like a 10 to 12 minute print in total. And a few minutes there with me in between pausing it as I'm spilling black resin all over the place here. Let's see if I can get this off without completely destroying it. Oh my gosh, I've got a flex plate on here. I could just flex this off as well. Oh, <laughs> I got it, I got it. All right, we're gonna get this cleaned up. And here it is, my resin 3D printed QR code. I'm honestly surprised how well this worked. Well, I mean, it didn't work so well, but it didn't bleed. I thought for sure the black and the white were gonna kind of fuse together and kind of be foggy, but there's a really clear distinction. This is actually a, a great way if you're interested in creating not just a QR code, but multicolor resin 3D prints by pausing, then swapping out the vat full of resin for a similar setting resin that you can run. I guess you could always go into the settings on the printer itself and try and tweak those, but this worked surprisingly well. And let's pull up my phone's camera and see if the QR code actually works. Oh, I think it does. There we go. That is 
amazing. That worked so well. Oh, I'm so impressed with this. And if you're heading to Earth this weekend, I'll actually be wearing this. So make sure to check it out for yourself because this was a really fun, quick project here. I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in my resin 3 printer settings, including the settings that I used for the Mars 3 here for this very print, you can find those over in my Patreon. And let me know what you thought about this different way of making a QR code with, again, a resin 3D printer. Hey, thanks again for watching all. I'll see you next time. Bye now.